Hello and welcome everyone. I'd like to thank you for joining us today for our Trade Smart webinar where we'll be talking trade promotion intelligence. I'm your host today, Karen Kurzweil. Today's presentation will be a 30-minute look at trade spend and how Trade Smart can maximize your promotion's ROI. If you're interested in a full demo, please contact you contact me after this session and I'll be happy to schedule a follow-up one-on-one -on -one session for your team. We will be recording today's webinar which will be available for you on our YouTube channel under Relational Solutions. A few reminders before we get started today. First, we have enabled chat so please feel free to ask questions. Given the short time frame, we uh, will address those at the end. Second, we have muted all the participants, but we also ask that you hit mute on your line to avoid any uh, interference. Our presenter today is Janet Dornkopf. Janet has over 20 years of experience in business intelligence. In 1996, she founded Relational Solutions and deals with the complex issues associated with integrating point of sale and syndicated data with internal data, trade plans, shipments, and cost of goods sold. On today's webinar, Janet will take you through a high-level overview on how our Trade Smart solution can help companies tackle the data issues inherent to POS and trade spend and show you end results companies have for understanding trade ROI. With that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Janet to kick us off on today's presentation. Thank you, Karen. I will just give a very brief company overview because I know some, most of the people on the call uh, seem to have uh, been familiar with relational solutions already in the past. But our background, I actually, as Karen mentioned, we started the company back in 96 and we started it to specialize in data warehousing and business intelligence. And we built over 250 data warehouses um, across all industries. So we built the data warehouses for companies the likes of Chase Manhattan Bank and Timken Industries and Chrysler and Xerox. And over the years, we started um, coming into consumer goods companies. And so back in the late 90s, we developed our POS Smart application. POS Smart automates the integration and cleansing of point of sale data with internal master data. And it's because of the POS Smart architecture that we're then able to leverage trade data like uh, trade plans, cost of goods sold, shipments, forecasts, budgets, some of the things that Karen had mentioned uh, that help us really calculate ROI for trade. So we're going to focus on that area of the business today. Some of the other information on this screen is basically just showing you some of the accolades and awards that we've won over the past few years. But uh, we have continually been on the Consumer Goods Technology Reader's Choice Award for about the past eight or nine years, I think. Every year we've won an award there, and most recently from CIO um, Magazine. Um, the other thing is we were recently acquired by a company called Mindtree. Mindtree specializes in digital. They have expertise across all of IT. They have a, a large focus in testing as well as in data integration and in analytics and predictive analytics and felt this was a very good mix with their um, digital group to also be able to now address the entire omni-channel and leverage big data. Uh, but to, again, today we're going to focus on that trade space. These are a list of some of our consumer goods companies. Some of the customers that we have are uh, using our applications to do the full breadth of our, our um, solution as far as implementing trade and calculating ROI. Others are using our solution strictly for integrating point of sale data, but we do have quite a variety of customers and it's because we can integrate data based on any data type. So it doesn't matter whether you are a direct store delivery or if you work through a distributor or another partner or if you own your own stores, or if you're getting data from uh, the C stores or the big box stores or your, your standard um, convenience and drug stores or even the um, uh, department stores. So we can integrate any data type. So we'll start with the POS data dilemma just because this is where um, most of the issues start occurring. And I'm going to breeze through some of these slides because for those who are on the POS integration, uh, presentation we had just recently, these will be very familiar slides, but we'll get through them pretty quickly and then we'll start talking about how we leverage this data for trade as well. But the issue that exists is for consumer goods manufacturers, you are getting data from so many different sources and those sources can be the syndicated data providers themselves, they can be POS data coming directly from the retailer, they can be getting uh, data from the different 
um, retailer portals or through various feeds. And it's not that the data doesn't exist, the data does exist, it's just that analysts are spent manually going out, figuring out where that data is today, if that data arrived correctly, if there were any issues with that data, and then begin the process of integrating that with the other internal data that they need to uh, analyze. So it is estimated that about 95% of an analyst's time is just spent gathering, cleaning, and integrating data, um, let alone justifying it. Because inevitably, when an analyst is doing things very manually and they're applying their own calculations, they're doing it differently than another analyst. And so there are always questions that come back to that analyst about where those numbers came from. So an analyst then goes back to the source and he has to explain the calculations, where the data came from, and so forth. So it's a very cumbersome and tedious process that most analysts uh, really don't like. In fact, I'm often asked for a copy of this particular slide because it is um, a very good depiction of what an analyst goes through. But the reason that the data is so challenging to work with is varied. So just when you think you've got one issue handled, another one will come up. So you've got to deal with the fact that data from the different sources are inconsistent, the frequency is inconsistent, um, the formats are inconsistent. You also have new sources that you didn't have available in the past. So there's e-commerce sites, there's Amazon sites, there's your own internal um, e-commerce site. There's also the standard traditional retailer POS data. And you're subject to the changes that those retailers make. You're also subject to any changes that are occurring in the market itself. Um, even once you get that data integrated, if there's a change of any sort, and what we typically see are analysts creating a lot of macros and so forth to automate some of the report development that they have, but those macros break very easily as soon as something changes on that source system. So it's not an easy process, even when they've automated it as much as possible. And some of the examples that we can easily depict for you are the fact that the retailers and the data providers give different data elements, and the data providers apply their own measures and algorithms to the data. So it doesn't necessarily align with what the retailers are sending you directly. In addition, you've got different weekend dates. Some retailers will have a Monday through Sunday week, others will have Sunday through Saturday. You might have Saturday through Friday internally, but all of those dates have to align somehow. And then you've got the different formats. So you'll get point of sale data in EDI 852 files, you might get distributor data in another EDI file, you're going to get data from some retailers through their portals, some just in text files, some you may FTP, um, you might get the syndicated data providers portal, but you also might get um, their, their raw data feeds and they might send that to you via an FTP site. So there's all sorts of different sources and different formats that the data is coming in. And somehow that different data has to be turned into a common data type. In addition to that, those various sources have different reliability. So the portals can be down. You can have missing data. Oftentimes, retailers will recast data if something was missing. Um, UPC issues are very common where some retailers will pad the data or pad the UPC on the front or the back or, or strip it out entirely. So there's a lot of issues with that. And EDI inconsistencies are very common. Although it's supposed to be a standard format, anybody that's worked with EDI data knows better. So different retailers will provide the EDI data the way that uh, fits their systems the best. Um, and then, of course, you've got the different hierarchies that the retailers all align to. Um, and they align to their own, actually. And they have their own vernacular that they're using. I don't actually depict the different vernacular here, but some retailers have more hierarchies than others, and that's probably more or less than what you have internally. But the problem is you want to be able to report to the retailers back on, uh, back on their term, and then also report to your own internal management based on their terminology and based on their hierarchies as well and their calendars. So then you've also got to deal with the fact that different um, feeds come at different times of the day, month, year, et cetera. You might get RMA information annually. You might get zip code changes on a quarterly basis. You might get uh, POS data from the syndicated data provider that might be daily level data, but you're only getting it monthly. Uh, very common. And then you may have POS data coming from some of the retailers on a daily basis. So all of those different frequencies need to be um, addressed within the system. And again, uh, there's 
all sorts of different market conditions that can change that would require you to change any macros that you may have developed, especially as we see retailers acquire other retailers or spin off a certain number of stores or spin off certain um, um, divisions of their company. So there's a lot of things like that that can occur that will have you manually making changes to what you, the, the few things are that you are able to automate. And if the retailer decides they're going to hire a new buyer and that buyer wants to see reports a little differently, again, you have to account for that. So these are just some examples of where a retailer's decision can make changes as well. And same with your end users. As their requirements change, your systems have to change, and that's all a manual process. So what we do with POS part is we streamline that integration process, but then we can leverage that POS data. And the way that the architecture works is on a nightly basis, we look for any new data that's arrived, whether that's data coming in from the retailers direct or whether that's from the syndicated data providers. In most cases, it's both. And we're also integrating that with internal master data and other data that's changing on your own source systems on a, on a regular basis. So we'll pull that into the application, and then we add other um, data sources to help calculate trade ROI, and I'll show you what that looks like. But the application doesn't end there. It's designed to be flexible and grow with your business. So over time, if you want to add information like your um, uh, general ledger, for example, or like your planogram information, we can do so. There's all sorts of different um, things that end users want us to integrate. But the underlying architecture is what's most important. On the user interface, I'm going to show you the outcome using our Blue Sky Analytics. But any BI tool can query our architecture. It can also reside on any database platform. Um, the application can be in the cloud or in, in our data center or behind your firewall. So jumping into trade itself, there's a lot of confusion in the market on what the difference is between trade promotion management, trade promotion optimization, and trade promotion intelligence. So trade promotion management this is the upfront process of creating trade promotion plans. It's designed to help you manage those plans and manage the funding for those plans. Common applications for that include SAP, TPM, Siebel, and Demontra. Those are trade promotion management applications. Some companies don't have one. Some companies are using Excel spreadsheets. Some people have a homegrown application. But trade promotion management is something that's really necessary for companies to really get it, um, to just plan out their promotions. You need something to plan, even if it's as simple as Excel. Uh, but there are a list of weaknesses here, and that's basically that, OK, you've got this trade promotion. Here's what you're managing, or your trade promotions, and here's how you're managing it. But what are the effectiveness of those promotions? So we see a lot of people then try to jump into trade promotion optimization. And here's the problem with that. A lot of tools and tool sets have TPM solutions and TPO solutions, but they're skipping the most important piece. And that most important piece to getting from TPM to TPO is that integration piece that will bring all the right data sources together to accurately measure ROI. So we call it the TPI gap. And that stands for trade promotion intelligence. And without addressing trade promotion intelligence and building a solution around that or having a solution around that, you're simply going to be um, trying to hammer a round peg into a square hole if you're trying to go right from TPM to TPO. In addition to that, if you do trade promotion intelligence correctly, you're going to get 80% to 90% of what you were looking to get out of TPO anyway. So it's a necessary step between trade promotion management and trade promotion optimization. So trade promotion intelligence leverages that enterprise architecture that I just quickly ran through for you in terms of you need to have an architecture in place that will easily help correct invalid data, give you an environment where you can add new subject areas and new data sources, and that's where that underlying architecture comes into play. But that architecture has to automate that whole integration and harmonization process. And that process then, once we've got that process in place, there are certain other components that are required. So what we tend to do is we tend for trade promotion intelligence is we take the data from your trade plans, whether again, whether it's in a, a, a uh, vendor specific application or whether it's something you built yourself, we take the plan data, we bring it in together with your shipments, the POS data, the syndicated data, and look at it how it relates to your trade promotions. And this, this integration of these various sources it gives us the ability to accurately measure your, um, the outcome of your promotion. 
So it gives us the ability to measure ROI and really to understand what promotions were effective, what promotions were not effective. It also gives us a repository for historical analysis so we can look at the trends of how those, those um, products and those um, promotions ran over the course of time. It also gives us the ability to feed the results into other systems. And I'm going to show you an interface that also gives us the ability to group different promotions into, or to group certain tactics into a single promotion and look at the promotion effectiveness. And I'll show you that shortly. But trade promotion intelligence makes trade promotion optimization possible. So what's different then between trade promotion intelligence and trade promotion optimization? Once you have that intelligence, you have about 80 or 90 percent of what most people are asking for in trade promotion um, optimization. Once you've got that understanding of ROI, then you can start doing predictive and what-if analysis. That's where TPO comes into play. So that's where you're able to say, okay, here's how the promotions performed. Here are the ones where we got our maximum ROI. Let's keep the promotions at these stores and get rid of that same promotion at these other stores and apply those, that, those dollars to a promotion that will work at those stores. And now let's look at what-if analysis. What if we um, run those promotions in one place instead of another? That's predictive analytics. And that's true predictive analytics. And that's how we define trade promotion optimization. If you're just trying to look at the performance and apply certain algorithms that will predict the outcome and look at the ROI, that's trade promotion intelligence. But when you're actually looking at what if analysis, that's what true trade promotion optimization should be considered. The problem is there are a lot of vendors out there that are um, misdefining what true trade promotion optimization is, and they're giving a lot of poor guidance because a lot of people are suggesting that all you need is a TPM and a TPO solution. With that gap, no TPO solution will be successful, which is why there's such a low adoption rate. So what is TradeSmart? TradeSmart is our solution that leverages our smart solution architecture. This is the, the application that integrates and harmonizes all of those different um, sources, including the trade components. It is promotion, automation, and analytics. And some people say it's past promotion, automation, and analytics. And that is true in its um, purest sense. But we can also do it basically on the fly because we're getting new sales information on a, data, on a daily basis. So we're actually able to look at that trade promotion effectiveness during the course of the promotion instead of waiting 30 days or 60 days later. What we do is we bring together that information with plans, shipments, and consumptions as it relates to trade promotions. And I'll show you a diagram that shows that. And it allows us then to accurately analyze the outcomes of those trade promotions for you. And it does that um, and compares, compares that to planning exceptions across all retail segments as well. So it also helps us to identify whether those promotions were properly executed and the amount of retail compliance. So a retailer that was supposed to set up a display on January 5th and it didn't get shipped out till January 6th, you know that that's something that was not uh, planned correctly. We have an interface that allows the correction for that. And I'll show you that in a moment. And again, like we talked about, it does give you a common repository that allows you to do multi-year analysis and year over year, week over week, month over month type of analysis. In addition, once that data is cleaned, it gives us the ability to feed other systems. This is where we then generally say feed that clean information into a um, trade promotion management application. We can even feed the clean results back into your trade promotion management application or we can, and we can feed it into multiple areas. And we can also feed that information into a data warehouse for further analysis or integrate it directly with your data warehouse. So basically what we're doing is you've got the different sources of data, and that includes things like plans, shipments, consumption. And that consumption can be genuine POS from the retailer. It can also be, and often is both, that as well as syndicated data from NPD, IRI, Nielsen, um, even uh, data providers like Retail Solutions the various data providers, um, in, in like MSA that's providing C-Store data, we take the various consumption sources of data and we integrate that with your shipments, your plans, your master data, of course, forecast and cost of goods sold. And we've got our integration engine with all the cleansing and validation processes pre-designed to do that for you. And by putting 
that into a common repository where all the data is clean and valid and reliable. We are then able to use a BI tool. Ours is called Blue Sky. Any business intelligence tool can then query it. We also have our Promo Pro application. Um, our Promo Pro application allows us to group tactics into single events for promotion analysis. But um, the, the other thing is, is we've got, within our data model, the retail calendars built up so that we can show the retailer the success based on the different retailers. We also have a data enrichment component of our data model that gives us more information on um, sales than you actually have coming in from the retailers because we apply different measures to calculate things like out of stocks, predicting out of stock, the potential impact of those out of stock, and that sort of thing. So that's all enriched data that we can apply and use within TradeSmart. So it is a rules-based system. It gives us a process for integrating those various sources. It gives us new insights that we had that we hadn't had access to in the past. It also helps us to understand the margins for the um, you know different promotions and margins for the different retailers, and helps protect against margin erosion. It also helps us get information on sell through, so sell in and sell through. So we have some visibility to the supply chain as well. And these are just some examples of the um, various measures. So the ROI, promotion effectiveness index, incremental weeks, percent lift, promotion efficiency, percent sell through, promotion event tactic analysis, and uh, purchase frequency analysis. And that slide alone is an hour long presentation. So anybody that's interested in seeing some detail on that, um, please let us know and we'll follow up with a, a more detailed presentation. This is an example of a joint business planning session report where we're actually looking at ROI and we've got KPIs here. In this case, we're looking at the market, the promoted product group, the date, and the week number. We also have the ability to pull in other data and we're looking at the event KPI, which is telling us an up arrow if it was successful, a down arrow if it was not successful. And we deem it not successful if it was successful for, even if it was successful for you internally, if it was not successful for the retailer, we deem that not successful because in true joint business planning sessions, any project should be successful for both parties if you're going to go ahead and continue that. And this just kind of shows us an example of where it was a win for the retailer but not for the supplier, and a win for the supplier but not for the retailer. So those would get down arrows. And you'll notice here where they're getting up arrows, it's a win for both. And those, those thresholds can be adjusted. Information within the report can also be dynamically charted below, and I'll show you what that looks like as well. So with that, I'm going to jump into the actual uh, uh, slides themselves, not slides, the actual um, report itself. Here we've got a promotional dashboard, and this is a very simple looking one, but I can look at the different markets, and I can look at the different promoted product groups, and in here I'm looking at the margin assessment, where I can zoom into any of them or look at them individually by the views below. I'm looking at the promotion performance, the base versus incremental, and we have, um, again, some more information we can share on baseline, so if somebody's interested in that, we can talk about that. Feature type assessment, ROI analysis, and shift to consumption. <coughs> We've got some examples of a trade event detail. In this one, this is an example of that same report I had shown you. If I go up here and I show all my headers, I can pull information into or out of the report. So if I wanted to pull out dates, for example, and maybe I want to look at all markets and look at this across and collapse that, I can do so. I can look at the different margins, and I can go up here, and I can unlock my chart so that anything I highlight is dynamically charted. So if I wanted to go in and look at the ROI in a pie chart form, for example, I could do so. Maybe I just wanted to look at my forecast. And again, I can change the chart type as well. This is an example of where we've just integrated the shipments with consumption, and we're looking at it by category. If I want to pull category out and just look at it by retailer, I can do that. And maybe I want to look at a specific category, a couple of specific categories. I can do so there too. And again, I can pull this information right into PowerPoint if I wanted to. The other thing is, is in the uh, Promo Pro application, I'm able to go in and I can open up different um, uh, groupings that we have. So this is basically what we call our event groupings. 
And basically, this is showing a cross-section that represents all relevant consumption, shipment, trade plans, and competition within a promoted product group and fiscal year for a given retailer or banner. So I opened one to show you. And this is showing me a chart. And the chart is showing me um, you know, the, the sales. And I can go in and I can actually look at the um, shipment information as well by clicking on this. I can zoom in as well. And I can look at, hey, I want to see my competitors too. So I can pull in the competitors that I want. I can pull in, in this case, my default to, uh, set to the top five competitors. So I've just got those in there. But I can change those and select which ones I want. Um, it also, in my event grouping, what I'm able to do is group the different events simply by dragging them and pulling them into the event type. So I've got the different events here. If I wanted to take them and say I want to pull this into my, this is a high-low event, this is a EDLP event, I can group them. And there is a workflow process where end users can submit that to management for approval. And you can also bring that into your final grouping over here as well. It shows me, there's a Gantt chart that shows the different promoted events down here so that I can't um, be doing, you know, so that I have a, a single snapshot view of those. I've also got our event summary, which explains things like the shipment date, performance dates. Anything that's grayed out, I can't adjust. Anything that is not, I can adjust. I also have my alignment detail. So if I go in, and again, I want to show my ship, shipments and my consumption here, or maybe I just want to look at my competitors versus our own sales, I can do so. And this is showing my um, alignment detail. So in my alignment detail, I see my key performance. I've got my um, IRI weekly base in here. There's a lot of different information built right into my alignment detail. And again, anything that's white, I can change anything that's grayed out. I can't, and the reason for that is you may have a, um, sh a, a promotion where things are supposed to ship again. In this case, on May 1st, maybe they didn't ship, ship until May 4th, and you want that accurately reflected in your uh, promotion. Then you can see how that um, you can correct that and feed that information right back into the um, TPM application as well. I also have the ability to upload ad images here, too. So if I wanted to bring in the ad images for historical purposes and take a look at you know, what that actual flyer was or the coupon itself, I can have those images built right in. And that's a very quick overview of our TradeSmart application. Um, the results of all of this information are then pushed out through our Blue Sky Analytics and would show up as reports like we're seeing here and would also populate um, a dashboard. And again, this is just a very simple dashboard. As you can see, there's multiple other dashboards over here. But that's just a very quick overview of the trade solution architecture. OK, thank you, Janet. Uh, we do have a couple questions that have come up. Um, I'd like to take a couple minutes and just address those before we sign off here for this afternoon. Our first question is asking, how quickly can we be up and running with this application? So generally, companies start with a few of their retailers and or their syndicated data. So it's very common to say, listen, here's our Nielsen uh, data, or here's our IRI data. We want to start with that. Or they might even say, here's, here are both data sets. We want to start with that, and we want to use our own internal baseline, or we want to use IRI's baseline, or another party, Sequoia's baseline. Um, we have our own baseline to us. That's, that's fine. But typically, we start with. Um, um, syndicated data as well as with potentially some POS data. So once we start with that um, and we define the scope, then we're able to start implementing. And that, that really varies based on the number of retailers and the, and the initial sources. And generally, it takes us about three weeks to get that initial data source set up. And from there, about three weeks per additional data source, unless, of course, all the um, data elements are uniform. Um, we have another question here, which is asking, what data sources do we need to provide? 
So usually we like the data in its raw format before it's been manipulated by a third party or by your internal people. So if we wanted to take EDI directly from the retailer, that's always good. We also can take data directly from, say, Walmart's retail link. Um, some of the retailer portals require a download first, which we would then take that direct download. Uh, but basically, any raw data feed from the retailer or the syndicated data provider is where we would start. And lastly, I have a question here from Sharon asking, how many retailers can be integrated? We have some companies with, you know, maybe five retailers that are on the that have raw data feeds and a single syndicated data provider. We've got others where we're using multiple data providers and have literally almost a hundred different retailers. We also have case one case where we've even integrated emerging market data, although for trade that's not typical, um, and that's because the trade functions are so different. But we have also integrated. Um, trade and sales information for trade analysis in other geographies, not necessarily uh, the emerging market, but most of the emerging market data we've integrated is for POS analysis and out-of-stock analysis, basically for um, order analysis too. Um, but it, so it varies. The answer to that is it could be five, it could be thousands. Thanks, Janet. Uh, we wanted to thank everybody again for your time today and invite you to follow our Relational Solutions training blog by going to our website at relationalsolutions.com. I know we did cover this material quickly. We um, will have this recorded version um, sent off to you along with the slides following this presentation today. We do regularly post updates and industry information on LinkedIn under the Demand Signal Repository. And uh, you can stay connected with us on Twitter and Facebook. You're welcome to call or email myself or Janet with your comments, questions, and feedback. We look forward to hearing from you, and have a great day, everyone.